And it's a good morning from the Bello Ads YouTube channel on a sizzling Sunday morning in the middle of London. Have I got something exciting to show you guys today? Um, and it's just at the end of this road, and it's the first one ever, I think, in the UK. So uh, let's go and take a look. I'm pretty excited to see this machine. Are you ready? Rather exciting. So, Richard has got his new machine. Well, it's really fast with the electric assist. <laughs> Oi. I'm supposed to be filming you, wait for me. That's got a wicked turn of speed. Is it? Okay. It was like, whoosh, I was like, oh, it's gone, I'm trying to pedal. It looks slick. <laughs> And what's the power output on the battery? 250? You mean the motor? The motor, sorry, not the battery. 250 what? 250. Uh, so it's really weak. Yeah. But it helps. Yeah, you're, it's just a little top up. It's really licked now. You try it and you'll see. John, that's it's awesome. It's, I like the turning circles amazing compared to this, like that right turn. Really? Okay. Because I've got the front wheels hidden in there. So, okay. it, like the wow turns amazing, but this one, you just like went round, I had to do a little three-pointy. So I'm about to take the Orca uh, for a spin and I'll let you know what it's like when I um, get back. Rich is going to film me riding off. So this is the, this is the one. Where do I stand, Richard? Uh, you can stand on the wells if you want. On here? Uh, Andrew said I could stand anywhere, but just try it. Uh, yeah, put your hand on here. Hand on here, get the other yeah. leg in. This is, uh, Get yourself in. We need to adjust the seat, I'm afraid. All right. Okay, so, right, we're in. Right, so this turns your light system on. And you've got a USB there. Mm -hmm. And this one down here is all your light system. So, well, I'll just put it on medium. Mm -hmm. Where are we? There we are. Once for five seconds, press it again and it'll stop. Cool. Oh, sorry. Right, yeah, and then it'll stop. And then uh, if you want it, press it in and hold it, it will stay on until you press either one and it okay. will cancel it again. Great for the, the gears are yeah. roll off, so it's here. Yes. And this is the gears. Yeah. So you change so the gears twist. with a roll off. Yep. Give awesome. it a twist. You can actually have a look what number you're on. Yeah. Number and, uh, one now. Okay. But you might be a bit uncomfortable, John, until we move the seat back a bit. Okay, and the motor so, should just kick in. Yeah, and the motor should kick and in. That's the handbrake. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And, yeah, that's the handbrake off now. Going for a ride. Yeah. He'll be back in a minute. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, um, okay, just ridden it and um, it's too short for me so Richard has kindly uh, adjusted the seat, slid it back a bit, so it should be fine now. <laughs> Super exciting. Okay. But here we go again. Have fun. Uh, Your handbrake's on. Down there. Fun in. Uh, that should be better. Yep. Okay. Take two. Uh, He's on full position. Yeah, we're ready. And it's Hamilton and it's go, go, go! So cool. Thank you. So you, um, you didn't have any issues with traffic or anything? No. Absolutely not, no. I've been riding Velomobiles for a number of years. Just like... <laughs> Rich is going into a baby, baby clearance mode. Okay, so just ridden the Orca. Uh, first impressions. 
Um, it's a really nice Velen mobile. Um, I took it for quite, uh, quite a long ride and I think I was doing about 25 miles an hour down the hill with the that has an e-assist on it 250 watt motor um, very solid Valimobile really well built it's my first time ever in an Orca a good purchase I think Richard just needs to get used to it but yeah it's super man uh, let's just lift the lid up oh, it's so nice man it's just the build quality is second to none this guy's done an amazing job on this thing okay so we've got the speedo here which is in miles per hour. In full power, man. I've just gone up some big hills and the, the battery bar level bar hasn't moved at all. Battery? The motor's in there. Okay, so what I really like is the attention to detail. Here you have the headlights, different settings. So press that and then you get this audible beep. Ah, oh, even the fin, shark fin on the top, has a indicator. Okay, so now the, the right hand side and I didn't know that the shark fin had a flashing light in there as you can see when you turn right. It just seems better made than the Sunri um, Sunrider I think. Now Richard has adjusted the um, seat and I can actually pedal it. It's a lot better. And there's a little cubby hole, a little bit of mesh in here which you can just throw your wallet and everything else in. Uh, and he has a splash deck, which I didn't know he had. And this thing has a little visor on it to keep the wind off as well. Which is really cool. Lots of storage bags in there. One down the back there. Yeah, this is one of the nicest. It's just really well finished. And this is the Orca. By Flevo, but apparently uh, Andre, the guy who made it, is about to turn up. So you've got big 90 mil brakes on here and the suspension looks pretty sturdy as well. Big suspension arms in the front there. And it looks like the whole thing's carbon fibre. Which is super cool man. You've got a little carry handle here on the back. You've got 90 mil drums on this one. Yeah, big drums. Which is... Yeah, but I can't notice much difference. I, I don't know. When I was hurtling down that hill, I thought... I pulled. I think they need to be running. You know what? It reminds me of the wow having them because on this thing you're quite spoiled because you just pull one lever and that's the brakes. You know, and you don't have to worry about pulling them both at the same time. Uh, we've just met up with Andre from uh, Flevo Bike. I will follow you. Okay, follow excellent. You. We're riding to Battersea Park now, and he's on an armadillo, which I'm hoping to get a, a go of. Oh, this is cool. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Flevo bike in front, Orca, and Armadillo with Andre and his son in the rear. <laughs> what a nice way to spend a Sunday. Happy Johnny. This is uh, the first time. Hey, this, uh, hey. Hey. <laughs> this is the first time I have seen an Armadillo in, in live. Yeah. I've only ever seen them on YouTube before. This is a small box. Normally there's a much bigger box. Oh, with the big DHL box. Yeah, yeah. So this is truly not liter. The normal box is one cube. Wow. I had 25 kilometers in London yesterday with him. Wow. Wow, that's all right. Cuts out anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cuts out about 10 to 12 miles an hour. Okay, yeah. Uh, so that makes sense. Yeah, it was going all okay. So, I, I thought you was using it. Yeah, that's the first time I really felt it without the motor. And how was it? Okay. Lovely. Not as yeah, not too heavy. 
It's a mean piece of machine. I like that tail fin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to ride it. I love I, I, I love doing a, being a creator of a YouTube channel. The things you get to do. The opportunities just appear. It's fantastic. <laughs> and this is how you exit an orca, which I'm still sort of getting the hang of. <laughs> Told you. <ya. laughs> I love it. Um, we stopped in Battersea Park and we have the orca here. Times 80 looks. From, and we have the Andre here, the, the guy who... Hi guys. Who created this thing. And um, he de kindly delivered it for Richard today with uh, his son, who's just over there. Andre, when did, you, uh, when did you start to create these things and what gave you the idea in the first place to make Velomobiles? Uh, then I have to go back a pretty long time. Um, yeah. Flame for Bikers founded about 30 years ago. Okay. Uh, founded by my father, and at this moment, uh, me and my two brothers, we uh, we are Flame for Bike. Okay. And in 1993, we uh, we made together with um, come on, I forget his name, but we made the, the aluminium elevator. Ah yes. Yeah. So that was a vehicle that we uh, that we uh -huh. produced, and that was the start for us in the Flame Mobiles. Okay. And uh, to be honest, that was also the start from uh, the Quest and uh, the Quadrofiler because wow. back then uh, Allard worked at Flavor Bike. And okay. he, 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 um, Allard was the guy who drove the, the Allerator with... Um, uh, when they went to Norway, they did a long ride, I saw. Also, yeah, to yeah. Norway and uh, Jim Tenteo went to Italy. Yes. Yeah. So later uh, Jim Tenteo started working at us. But about the Orca, um, the first first design of the Orca was called Versatile. That's it's the, from the from the outside, pretty much the same bike. From the inside, it's totally different. And that was in 2003 that we created that. That's when I first thought about getting a Velum. Okay. Well, that was the yeah. first one I saw the picture of. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first style, and um, several years later we uh, redesigned it. I think that was around 2010 or 11, mm -hmm. around that. We re redesigned, uh, especially the, the mechanical uh, parts. So, uh, yeah, a lot of things. And so was that part two? That was then the Orca. Ah, okay. That's yeah. when the Orca evolved, yeah. That was uh, the first style evolving in the Orca. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, lately we have, we've done some small updates uh, mm -hmm. with the electronic dashboard, with um, wow. yeah, some... some uh, so, some nice features in the yeah. blinking and the signal light and things like that. I mean, the, the attention to detail in the finish when I first looked inside I was, was stunning, yeah. amazing. Yeah, if, when you uh, look High. for the first time from the outside, it looks a very simple bike. Yeah. But when you dig deeper into it, it yeah. there are a, a lot of tiny details. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a pretty complex bar. Definitely high-end. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely high-end. Yeah. yeah. Especially uh, if you see how much work it is to build one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what right. I would like. Next time I'm over there, I'll have a look at yeah. how much you have to put in, how much time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, stunning machine and um, Rich has definitely made a really good choice <laughs> with the Orca. I, I think you cannot make a wrong choice except when you don't uh, investigate enough. So you have, yes. to, you have to make a choice that fits you. Yep. And some, some people fit the, the, the Quest, some people fit the Quattrofello, yeah. and some people fit the Arca. It depends on totally on your lifestyle, what type of commute you have, whether yeah. you have a hilly ride yeah. or flat lands, yeah. you know, there's so much, so many variables and it's really good to do your research first, as yeah, Andre yeah, said, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really and important. Luckily, if you did your research not good enough, uh, the second hand, hand markets, at least in the Netherlands, is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So you can get rid of your uh, second hand. Uh, yeah, there's a really good fellow. website. I think it's called leakfeet.net. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the that's one I look on. Website. Yeah. yeah, that's right. like a eBay for Velomobiles and recumbents yeah, and like rowing that. bikes. <laughs> yeah. and, and then uh, on the right here, we have the Armadillo, which the armadillo. is the first one I've seen in the flesh. And it's uh, I was following it, watching the uh, suspension at work and the rear and thinking, yeah. my God, the, the, the attention to detail is stunning. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what a beautiful! I thought his bike was rolling off then. Yeah. Uh, what a beautiful machine! And um, when did you come up with 
this this is something we developed uh, not for ourselves, but mm -hmm. uh, the guy Johan Allenson from the yep. company fell off came to ah, us yes. yep. uh, through a mutual, a mutual contact yep. and he found out about Flavor Bike and he was into a uh, delivery business in Gothenburg oh, in, okay. uh, in Sweden in, in Sweden yeah yeah and he wants to he had some ideas about a four-wheeled cargo bike but yep. he wasn't able to uh, really um, develop uh, the product so he came to us or we could help with development. Wow. And we have uh, done a lot of development for ourselves, but also for other companies. Uh -huh. That's actually where we're pretty good at. And, and basic at the moment we develop for, uh, for a big bike company in the Netherlands. We do mm -hmm. some uh, also cargo bike uh, stuff. Stunning, yeah. Um, but we developed it for uh, Johan Allensen. Mm -hmm. And that started, uh, I think it's about, yeah, four years ago already. Yeah. Something like four years ago. And we fully designed it from scratch. Of uh -huh. course, Johan had some ideas and he had some um, uh, like input, some some, some um, rule or dimensions and things okay. like that. Okay. And he just gave those to you and said, "Work, yeah. work your magic." Yeah. Yeah. Some, some sort of, yeah. <laughs> and then so, you came up with this beautiful thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and actually, this one is uh, one with a small box. Normally, uh, for the delivery, this box is too small. And this is one we use at Flavor Bike. To do uh, to bring yeah. our uh, uh, postal uh, parcels to uh -huh. the postal service. And so the, the the big box I've seen on the Del DHL bikes. How many uh, is it? Like three times this size? Yeah, yeah, correct. This one is about 300 liter. And normally there's a lid on that I can close it, but mm -hmm. for this weekend I took it off because uh, I want to drive my son around. Yeah, of course, and, then it's easier with and the he's in here, looking in looking here. looking very cool <laughs> in the bike. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, the 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 box that uh, DHL mm -hmm. uh, and and other companies use and and, and Pling and, and it's um. Exactly the same width as the wheels, yeah. so it's uh, 86 wide. Okay. It's about one meter thirty long. Yeah. And it's uh, the the box itself is one meter high. Okay. So you have uh, wow. one cube, about one cube of. So uh, a lot of cubes, cargo space. With two doors on the side. Yeah. Electronic. Oh, and they lift up. No, they go open like this. Wow. With uh, gas gas springs in it and a remote control. That's amazing. And uh, you have a button. You just press that, and it yeah, will like open. Yeah, You have a button, and then you open. It's, it doesn't pop open. But Stunning. You, Push the button and then you have a few seconds to open the door. Uh -huh. And should we go over some of the features on here? At the front here, this looks yeah. like for the... E this for the e-assist? Yep. Um, uh, this is my own light. It, mm -hmm. it, uh, the lights uh, on the DHL vehicles are on the... I say DHL, but of course yeah. uh, different companies use them. But at the, the cargo version, they have indicator lights too. And they have yeah. um, a, 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 a more designed, better designed bull bar. Yeah. But one good feature is um, um, adjustment of the seat. Okay. Because it's like in the car, you can just. Slide oh, you just it pull like the that. lever. You just pull the lever and you you slide it back. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Front. Well, that's like zero hassle. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you know, with with a vehicle like this, the the drivers from DHL or whatever company. It's a different guy every different every guy day. Every, and and they yeah. have to adjust. You know, it should be in split seconds adjusted uh -huh. for their size, and then off they go. Yeah, and you've got so uh, this. I'm assuming is a parking brake. It's a parking brake. Yeah. Yep. So, so there, and uh, we have uh, disc brakes in the front, disc brakes in the rear, uh -huh. the steering over here, like this. Yeah. You have a really small turning radius, like four meter. Wow. So, I drove to London, no problem at all. And you can do a yeah. U-turn, no reversing U -turn, needed. U-turn on half the road. I can. Yeah. Does it have a reverse gear for on the? No, motor? it doesn't have yeah. a reverse gear. But because you're sitting, you just put your feet on the floor, and you have. I yeah. Should not go reverse now. Because yeah, because you're on the step. <laughs> on yeah. stairways. Yeah. But just with your feet, you go backwards. Uh huh. And, uh, so that's very fantastic. And of course, suspension in uh, both in the front and in the rear. Wow. And that's something and this all you works can, here. Yeah, it's uh, like a double wishbone, like uh, Formula One cars and race cars. Wow. So stunning. Uh, I saw in the And um, what what sort of uh, what what sort of price are we looking at starting? Um. I'm not sure. It's on the website of uh, Vlaaf.se. Okay. Yeah. Sweden. Yeah. Uh, it's about uh, I think 7,800 euros oh, that's starting. A, that's okay. And is that with uh, e that, with the assist? VAT, I think. Like. Yeah. And then, uh, but the box gone. But have a look at Vlaaf. Uh, Vlaaf. Yeah. V e l o v e. Yep. S e. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, so anybody needing to find out any more about these bikes can just check out that yeah. website. I'll yeah. put a link in the description of the video anyway. And um, 
Wow, what are the wheels made of? <laughs> uh, the wheels are from the, an, a company also in Dronten. It's uh, the company Alicht. Ah, yes. Yep. Um, we used uh, wheels from Taiwan in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, but Alicht, uh, Leo Fischer from Alicht, he designed some uh, <laughs> special wheels for uh, three and four wheel um, yeah, recumbents and bicycles. Yeah. And uh, they tested it on Armadillo and they work great. So um, at this moment, um, as far as I know, all armadillos are uh, uh, delivered with uh, wheels from Leo from Alicht. Okay, that's really cool. And under here, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's, um, I can I can flip over the bike a little bit so you can. So we can have a look. Bit. Yeah, that would be cool. Have a look. Uh, I don't push my son off the <laughs> off the edge of the cliff. Yeah. Ah, do you want yeah, me to hold yeah, anything? Yeah. Oh, cool. So there's the e assist. Mm -hmm. It's a Bafang um, mid drive yep. motor. It's powerful, 250 watts. Brilliant. Uh, and it's in front of the gears, and that that makes a big difference. Um, so there's a roll off gear over there, cool. and from the roll off gear, there's an double chain to the back because mm -hmm. you have a really low gear you can climb hills of 15 percent with, really? with luggage in. Wow. so you have a low gear of 0 0.7 meter per um, yeah. pedal um, second um, and then the drive shafts yeah you see one uh, this is a, so it's a really sturdy really strong machine yeah tough you can do I'm sure you can do off-road everything with this thing uh, yeah you can do it it's, it's not really built for off-road but I do off-road uh, sometimes yeah look at this you can see it a bit on the dirt on the wheels yeah, yeah it's amazing absolutely amazing what a fine piece of machinery and design super cool uh, really cool that's awesome well, Andre, that was great, and uh, thanks very much. Yeah. And nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you too. Excellent. Yeah, Seem to have gathered, uh, gathered a crowd here. <laughs> it's funny, I just look round and all these people here. So, I'm now, I'm now aboard the Armadillo, and I'm going for a spin. Good night, God bless, you've been a lovely audience. I think you can uh, have the camera best on your left hand, because on the right you have the, the, the front gears. brakes and you have the gearing. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Andre, see you soon. Wow, okay, so we've got the front brakes on here, which is really cool. Um, oh, this is a mean machine. Definitely feel the, uh, the weight on this, um, compared to like Richard's. Um, I forgot to ask him how much it weighs. That's one thing I'm gonna do. So we've got disc brakes all round on this thing. <laughs> Armadillo time, yeah. Nice roll-off gear on here. And we're doing 30 kilometers an hour already, and I'm not really pedaling. Oh, it's got a left mirror because it's uh, to try to break. Oh my God. This, I'm going through a narrow gap here, let's see. The good thing is it doesn't stick out any more than that left wheel arch. Oh, I really like this. I mean, I could just see myself cruising around town. This thing, you can move house, you can do whatever trying out the steering here and it's uh, it's very very responsive okay we're in top gear 14 this thing is going nice oh it's very comfortable beautiful piece of kit <laughs> and you don't know how long I've wanted to ride one of these I've been waiting uh, Wait in a long time and it hasn't disappointed at all what a nice machine it's very cruisy though you know you feel like if I give it a bit more effort on the old pedals it doesn't really make a lot of difference it's like I'm still doing TK let's slow down no that's 30 percent of the battery left average 17k I want the Speedo. So uh, the maximum Andre has done is 36 kilometers an hour on this trip. Okay, I don't want to use up his battery. So let's turn around. Uh, I've got a roundabout coming up. So let's give it a go around the roundabout and see what that's like.
absolutely fine. I mean, the four wheels, you have no worries about lifting a wheel. It's pretty much impossible, I think, on this thing. And it just trudges on. It's basically like a delivery van of the bike world, you know. Just pedal away. Ah, oh, super nice. And the seat, the seat is like perfect for me. You know, it's got like a slight back tilt on the bit where you park your bum. So it's tilted back slightly. So you're really sort of, the seat feels like it's actually gripping you, which is really nice. Yeah, all in all, a super nice bike. I'm trying to run this dog over. Let's change down these gears a minute. Yeah, I love it. And um, yeah, really nice. So guys, yeah, check out the Armadillo. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. This is like riding the Orca and riding this is like, I think the highlight of my month, well, actually the last four months. So nice. Oh, this e assist is just, I mean, I wouldn't want the battery power to run out and then I think this could be a real slog. I want to find out how much it weighs, which I will do when I get back to Andre and uh, find out if he's actually had to ride it at all when the e-assist he's run out of battery power and see see what he says armadillo all the way out of 10 i'd give this oh i'd give it a nine nine out of ten now this is interesting we've got a really narrow gap here which I don't think we're going to get through. Wow. Real, really narrow, this thing. <laughs> Straight through with loads of room left on the side there. Definitely, I give the Armadillo a 9 out of 10 and uh, the Orca 9 out of 10 as well. Really good. And the Orca, absolutely perfect city bike um, I reckon you could do long tours with that as long as you've got a couple of batteries no problem very comfortable and I just like the finish in it everything is like the best quality even the, the you know the horn buttons the way everything works is uh, absolutely stunning and, and anyway, so, uh, yeah exactly uh, how much does this one weigh the armadillo it's heavy yeah uh, this one I think it's uh, about like, 65. Yeah, I thought I was going to say 60, 60, 60 kilos. You wouldn't notice it though, would you? No. I mean, you I, I said when I was riding around, I said, I wonder how much it weighs. I said, oh, I forgot. I'll ask Andre when I get back. Yeah. I said, I'm sure if the battery power went completely, yeah. then it might be like... Yeah. Then it's heavy, when especially, you know, not, not the way we drove here, mostly down. Yeah, hill. yeah. But uh, yeah, when you go uphill, it's, it's heavy. Oh, what a great day. Now we're riding back. We're going to drop, we're gonna drop uh, Andre off and his boy. 